Data transmission is a reasonably short unit. Our first objective is, of course, to work out how to calculate the data rates on a network. Now, that involves several things. The first thing to remember is bandwidth. Now, bandwidth, of course, is only a measure of how much data can fit onto any transmission medium at any one time. It's not a measurement of speed, although that is what we tend to use it for in the real world. 100 megabits per second, and you can tell it's bits by the small b, means at most you could send 100 megabits, that's 100 million bits, of data down the cable in one second. But if we need to send less, if we need to send, say, 16 bits, it would still take that one second to transmit. There's no difference there. Bitrate, then, is a similar measure but describes something technically different. And it talks about the data requirements of an application over time. So, for instance, a high bit rate means we need a large amount of data to be sent over a network in a short period of time. The most common usage for a high bit rate application that you will have experienced recently is probably all your live lessons and video chats you've been having during lockdown. High bit rate just means that we need to send plenty of data over the network in a short period of time. And in this case, the data being sent is time sensitive. You will notice problems if you don't have enough bandwidth to support the high bit rate. And in our case, that would be choppy video, lost frames, or stuttering audio. Calculating the cost of transmitting over a network then involves a node diagram like this. Each dot is a node. It could be a computer, a router, or something similar. And the number on the cable between them explains how long it takes to move between those nodes. Usually, we're told which node to start from. In this case, it would be node A. And if we wanted to calculate the transmission cost to get to row D, we'd need to look at all the potential routes. So if we just go at the obvious one and we go from A to B and A to D, that is 5 plus 1, so that's a cost of 6 to get to D. Now, 6 what? It doesn't matter. It could be uh, milliseconds, it could be a transmission medium speed. We don't know. All we need to know is we want this number to be as small as possible. But of course, there are other routes from A to D. We could go via C. So if we go from A to C to D, we get a total cost of 6. So that's the same as going from A to B to D. So it wouldn't matter which direction we went. But there is another way of going. If we go from A to C to B to D, the transmission cost is only 5. That's a shorter transmission cost than it takes to get there in any more direct way. And despite the fact we go through an extra node here, it's actually a little bit shorter. Our next objective is to look to work out the lowest cost route on the network. Now that usually is done with a more complicated algorithm, but the only way we've really seen it in any past paper questions is looking a bit like this. We'd have a list of destinations and we'd have a starting node. In this case, our starting node is A. And we'd need to work out the cost to get from A to each of the other nodes. And we're also looking for the shortest route. Uh, so I've started by filling in the cost for A, because to get to A from A, it costs us nothing. And the route we're going down is just going through node A. Uh, but let's look at B next. B has some options to get to it. I could go directly from A, which would be a cost of 5. Or I could go via C, which would be a cost of 4. Now, that's significantly shorter. Now, there are other routes. I could go from A to C to D to B, for instance, but that's a larger cost. I could go from A to C to D to E to B, but that's a larger cost. So the idea is brute forcing your way around and looking through the various nodes and transmission medium and seeing which gives you the shortest cost to get from A to that node. So in our case, to get from A to B, the shortest direction is actually through C, and that's a cost of 4. Moving on to C, the shortest way to get into C is the A to C route, which is a cost of 2. Moving on to D, the shortest way to get to D is coming directly from B, and that gives a total cost of 5 overall. And the shortest way of getting to E is by coming directly from D, which gives a total cost of 6. That's the way you go about filling up your routing table. It's reasonably straightforward. However, there is a slightly different way of doing it that's appeared in some past papers, and particularly the example assessments we were giving at the start of this course, which was a forwarding table. Now, a forwarding table is broadly the same thing, but instead of having a route, we have a go-to that explains which node to go to first. So you can see the costs are exactly the same, but rather than in our previous example where we had the previous node we visited, we have a list of the first node we visit from A. And what that tends to do 
is it tends to give you the shortest first node to go to. Our last objective is reasonably broad, describe the internet in terms of a worldwide communications infrastructure. Now the internet is basically just a bunch of networks that are connected together around the world using the same protocol. Now that would be TCP IP that we learned about in AS. And it's connected using various hardware, wired, wireless, routers, switches, hubs, all that stuff we learned about in AS, and different connection mediums, optical fiber, copper, coaxial, all these different ways of connecting. It doesn't matter the physical medium or the connection. If it's all used in the same way, if they're allowed to communicate between each other, then we are fine. Bridges, of course, we use to communicate between different networks with different protocols as well. So the internet is this huge communications infrastructure that's made up of lots of different pieces that all communicate nicely. Now, the part that you talk about sometimes when you talk about internet is often the World Wide Web. This is an application on top of the internet, and it's the bit that serves you the web pages. The internet is the connection technology behind the scenes. The World Wide Web is the information sharing hyperlinking technology that we tend to use to navigate it.